This is the first in a series of videos designed to teach the basics of CSS. To get the most from this video series, you should be familiar with HTML. If you haven't used HTML before, then I would recommend learning some of the basics of HTML before watching these videos. I have an HTML video series that you can watch which covers HTML basics. For reference, this CSS video series is based on CSS version 2.1. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and it is used to specify how elements within a document will look. For example, you can use CSS to set the style, color, and size of your text, or you could use it to specify a background image, or if you wanted to add a border around something, you can specify that with CSS. There are quite a few characteristics that CSS can control. The best thing to do is jump right in and look at an example. To make things easy, we are going to be using the code tester at littlewebhut.com. When you arrive at the website, just start by clicking on the CSS tab. Here you will find a list of CSS properties that can be set. I'm going to click on the color link. At the bottom of this page is a code tester that we can use. I'm going to start by typing a heading tag. Now I can press the view button to see what this does. And you can see here my heading is now displayed in this area down below. Now let's apply a CSS style. There are actually three different methods for applying styles. The first method that I'm going to show applies the style directly to the HTML tag by adding a style attribute. So I do this by going up to the heading tag and right after H1 I'm going to type a space followed by style, followed by an equal sign, followed by a pair of quotation marks. The style information will be enclosed within the quotation marks. I'm going to use a style to set the color of the text to red. I do this by going to the center of the quotation marks. and I'm going to type color, followed by a colon, followed by an optional space, followed by a color, which in this case will be red. Now when I come down here and press the view button, you can see that the text is turned to red. Let's take a closer look at the style that we just applied. Color is called the property. The property specifies what it is that we are controlling. If you look at the left side of the web page here, these are all a list of different properties. If we go up here, we can see this is the color property that we're using right now. And then the color property is always followed by a colon that you see here. And then it is followed by a value, which in this case the value is red. This space in between the colon and the value is optional, and it is just used to make the style easier to read. Multiple styles can be specified if we separate them with semicolons. For example, in addition to setting the color of the text to red, I can also center the text using the text align property. So to do this, at the end of this first style, I'll add a semicolon, and then I'll type a new property, which is text align. And then I follow that with a colon and another optional space. And in this case, I'm going to set it to center. And now when I press the view button, you can see that the text is not only red, but it's also centered. Now instead of specifying center like I did here, I could have specified left, right, justify, or inherit. To see a list of possible values that you can use, you can just go to the left side of the web page here and click on a property. So if I go to text align and click on that, it will show me a page that shows information about this property. Here's the syntax section that shows what we've covered so far, which is the 
property followed by a colon followed by an optional space and then followed by a value and this tells us that the value can be either the keywords left right center justify or inherit if you look down in the keyword section it'll give you more information about each of these keywords and what they do here in the usage section you can find out information about what the property does and it also gives examples on how to use it. We can see that this example demonstrates text align using right, justify, and center values. And we can also try out this example by pressing one of these test buttons. I'm going to press the XHTML test button. This takes me to a code tester with the example already typed in. I mentioned earlier that there are three different methods for applying styles. This example shows the second method, which embeds the styles within the HTML document itself. The CSS examples here at Little Web Hut use this second method. Recall that the first method specifies the style using a style attribute within the HTML tag. The second method uses a style tag that is located in the head section of the document. Here is our head section. This is the beginning and ending of the head section. And here is the style tag that starts here and ends here. The style information is located right here in between the opening and closing style tags. And just like before, these styles use a property name, which is text aligned in this case, followed by a colon, and then followed by a value. But now the style information is contained in between these curly brackets. And preceding the opening curly bracket here is a selector. The selector defines which HTML element that the style will be applied to. So this says that the text align property will be set to write for all H1 elements. The nice thing about this method for applying styles is that the style will apply to the whole document. So if my HTML document had 20 H1 tags, for example, then all 20 of them would be aligned to the right side. So let's look at this example a little more closely. Since we use the text align set to write for the H1 element, we can come down here and see that this is the H1 element, so this text should be aligned to the right. Let's go ahead and press the View button to see what this looks like. And sure enough here, this text right here for the H1 element is aligned on the right side. Then up here for the P element, we said that we wanted to align the text to justify. And justify just simply means that the text will be aligned on the left and the right side. And we're applying it to a paragraph tag, which is right here. And we can see here that the text generated inside this paragraph tag is aligned both on the left and the right side. And then this third alignment that we had up here was set to center, and this is for the div tag. Let me scroll down here a little bit. And so the div tag encloses both this H2 element here and the image element. If we look down here, both the H2 element text is centered as well as the image itself is centered. And just like before, I can also add multiple styles by separating them with semicolons. So I can set the H1 text here to red just by going here to the end, and I already have a semicolon here. And I can just type color and then follow that with red. And then when I press the view button, you can see that my text is not only aligned on the right side, but the color is now red. Back on our previous page, on the left side of the page up near the top, there's a link called how to apply styles. If I click on that, it shows the three methods for applying styles. The first method that we covered is shown here. Here you can see a P tag that uses the style attribute and it sets the color to red and it sets a background color to yellow. 
And then again, this is contained all within the P tag itself. The second method that we just finished covering shows the style here in the head section. And this shows the curly brackets that we used and the selectors here that we used that defined which elements that we wanted to apply the styles to. This page also shows the third method, which we haven't covered yet. This third method uses an external style sheet. To use this method, place a link tag in the head section of your HTML document, like is shown here. The link tag uses an href attribute, which is used to point to our external style sheet. In this case, our external style sheet is named website.css. For this example, website CSS is located in the same directory as the HTML document, so that only the name of the style sheet is required. If the style sheet is not located in the HTML document directory, then the path needs to be specified as well. Next, we create a separate file with the same name that is specified here. So in this example, we would create a file named website.css. We can then put our CSS styles in this new external style sheet. So this might be a couple of styles that we would put in this external style sheet. In this case, our external style sheet says that we want to set the color to red and the background color to yellow for all P elements, and we want to set the text alignment to center for all H1 elements. Using an external style sheet like this, this will let this P element here and this H1 element here be applied to all P elements and all H1 elements that are contained in HTML documents that have this link in the head section. So let's say that we had a website that had 100 HTML pages. So if all 100 of our HTML pages all had this same link in the head section, which points to our single external style sheet, then when we make a change to one of these styles, then that change will be applied to all 100 of the HTML documents that use this single style sheet. This method is commonly used to allow a single style sheet to control the look of an entire website. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.